Stanford University. Having built up the femoral triangle on the front of the thigh, I think it's a good idea to look at a cross-section of the thigh. If we indicate the skin of the thigh in this manner, passing it right round onto the lateral side, making this the lateral side and this the medial side of the thigh, and then if we indicate in the center of the thigh the shaft of the femur coming round posteriorly to a ridge known as the linear aspera here, and then indicating in the middle of the shaft, of course, the bone marrow. Now beneath that, beneath the skin, uh, we can indicate the position of the deep fascia of the thigh, which you remember is rather like a trouser leg in that it completely encloses the muscles of the thigh and lies deep to the skin and superficial fascia. So this is the fascia lata, or deep fascia of the thigh, remembering of course that it is thickened down the lateral side to form the iliotibial tract. Now superficial to that, between the skin and the deep fascia, we can indicate the presence of the fatty superficial fascia in this sort of way. Now lying in the superficial fascia on the medial side, we have the great saphenous vein, which you remember arose from the dorsal venous arch of the foot, passed up in front of the medial malleolus, in front of the medial malleolus, the tibia, behind the knee joint, and then crosses the medial side of the thigh to drain into the femoral vein. Now the thigh is divided into three compartments by fascial septa, which run from the inner surface of this deep fascia towards the linear uh, aspera in this manner. We have a septum passing in here, another one passing out here in this direction, and a third septum passing out in that sort of manner. And we shall see that each of these compartments between the septa has groups of muscles, each of which have their muscle, nerve supply and blood supply. Now let's start with this anterior compartment. You remember we have a rising from the anterior and lateral surfaces of the shaft of the femur, the vastus intermedius muscle. Here I'm just showing it in cross section. So this is the vastus intermedius muscle arising from the anterior surface and lateral surface of the shaft of the femur. Lateral to that, we have a fairly large muscle, which is also tethered to the fascial septa and the deep fascia of the thigh, we have the vastus lateralis muscle coming round and lying superficial and lateral to the vastus intermedius. So this is the vastus lateralis muscle. Medially and in front, we have a fairly large muscle here, the rectus femoris. Do you remember the rectus femoris arose from the anterior inferior iliac spine and from above the acetabulum? and it's passing down to be inserted into the patella. So that is the rectus femoris muscle. Now on the medial side of the shaft of the femur, uh, we have the vastus medialis. And here it is on the medial side of the femur, rising from the medial lip of the linear aspera, coming up around here and passing down there, the vastus medialis cut across. Now what is the nerve supply to all these muscles? The muscles that are present in this anterior compartment. It is the femoral nerve. And the femoral nerve has come down from behind the inguinal ligament and quickly supplied uh, these muscles. Now what lies in this area here? Where we have a small muscle, a strap-like muscle, that resides in this area here known as the, vast, uh, known as the sartorius muscle. It's a strap-like muscle going down across the thigh and eventually being inserted into the medial surface of the uh, shaft of the tibia. So that here we have a little triangular interval and in that interval we have the femoral artery and 
lateral, posterolateral to that, the femoral vein, and we mustn't forget to put in there the continuation of the femoral nerve, which is in this area, is the saphenous nerve, and uh, here we can see the nerve to the vastus medialis. Here's the vastus medialis receiving its nerve supply, and then there's the deep branch of the uh, obturator nerve passing down there. So that is this anterior compartment. Now what have we got here? This is the medial compartment. And lying in the medial compartment, behind this septum, we have the adductor longus muscle. The adductor longus muscle, cut across, going down to be inserted eventually into the linear aspera. And behind that, we have a massive muscle, the adductor magnus. The adductor magnus having two origins, the hamstring origin from the ischial tuberosity and the adductor origin from the ischial pubic rami. And then down here, like a strap passing down, is the gracilis muscle, cut across and going down to be inserted into the upper part of the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia. Now these muscles are supplied by the obturator nerve, and the obturator nerve supplies uh, not only uh, the adductor longus, the adductor magnus, and the gracilis, but also goes on down uh, to supply the uh, knee joint. And the arterial supply uh, to this compartment is the profunda artery. This is a branch of the femoral artery just below the inguinal ligament. So this medial adductor compartment is supplied by the obturator nerve. The anterior compartment here had been supplied by the femoral nerve. Now this leaves the posterior compartment. What have we got there? Here we have a muscle known as the biceps muscle, the biceps femoris muscle, cut across, going down to be inserted into the head of the fibula. And then medial to that, we have the semimembranosus muscle, and uh, rather the semitendinosus muscle, and medial to that, the semitendinosus muscle. So it's biceps here, semimembranosus, and semitendinosus, together in this posterior compartment. And here we have the large sciatic nerve situated in the compartment and supplying this area. So you can see how by taking a section across the thigh, we see that there's an anterior compartment with a muscle supplied by the femoral nerve, an adductor compartment with a nerve supply from the uh, obturator nerve, and a posterior hamstring compartment supplied by the sciatic nerve. The blood supply to this compartment is from the femoral artery, the blood supply of the adductor compartment is from the profunda artery, and the blood supply of the posterior compartment is from perforating arteries which are going through from the uh, profunda artery. We also, higher up in this compartment, have the inferior gluteal artery. Uh, having completed this uh, section across the thigh, uh, are there any questions? Dr. Snell? You've emphasized that the thigh is divided up into compartments, each of which has its own muscles, nerve, and blood supply. Would you go over that again for us, please? Yes, the thigh, as I've shown, is surrounded by a deep fascial uh, sheath, which keeps the muscles in position, and running from the inner surface of this fascial sheath are these three septa, one here, one here, and one there, be attaching to the posterior surface of the femur at the linear aspera. Now, this anterior compartment contains the quadriceps muscles and the sartorius, and these muscles are all supplied by the femoral nerve and receive their blood supply from branches of the femoral artery. This medial compartment, on the other hand, contains the adductor group of muscles, which is, has its blood supply from the profunda artery and its nerve supply high up from the obturator artery. And this group of muscles in this compartment are known as the hamstrings, consisting of the uh, biceps, femoris, of the semitendinosus and semimembranosus, and has the sciatic nerve. The blood supply of this posterior compartment is derived above from the uh, inferior gluteal artery and by perforating branches of, uh, of the profunda artery. Dr. Snell, where was the great saphenous vein? Well, now, the great saphenous vein 
is uh, on the medial side of the thigh. It's passed up from um, behind the knee and is lying in the superficial fascia there and it passes on up across the thigh to drain into the femoral vein about one and a half inches below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. This is the vein that gives rise to so much trouble and causes varicose veins. Dr. Snell, what are the boundaries of the subsartorial canal? Now the subsartorial canal lies on the medial side of the thigh and it is this little triangular area here bounded medially uh, rather medially here by the sartorius, bounded lat anterolaterally by the vastus medialis, and bounded behind by the adductor longus, which is covered by this fascial septum. You can see that in this canal, we have the terminal part of the femoral artery, which is going to go on down and go through the hiatus and the adductor magnus into the popliteal space. It also has the saphenous nerve, the nerve to the vastus medialis, and usually a branch of the obturator nerve. There is the, the femoral vein. It is an, an area about a third, about, occupying about the middle third of the, the thigh and lies underneath this sartorius muscle. Dr. Snout, you mentioned the linea aspera. Where again is that structure? The linea aspera is a ridge, bony ridge on the posterior surface of the shaft of the femur. And you can see that attached to it are these three uh, septa, fibrous septa, and also many of the muscles of the thigh gain attachment to the femur along this ridge known as the linear aspera. Thank you. Well, now we'll build up the adductor compartment of the thigh. We have placed in position on the blackboard the innominate bone with the anterior superior iliac spine, at the anterior end of the iliac crest, the body of the pubis, the pubic crest, and the pubic, uh, the pubic uh, tubercle. And here we put in the obturator foramen and fill it in with the obturator membrane. We've already built up the hip joint, having put the dark green capsule in position, leaving the hole for the synovial membrane to come through and come continuous with the subsurface bursa. We put in light green, the important iliofemoral ligament, and the smaller pubofemoral ligament. And here we've got the greater trochanter, the less trochanter, the shaft of the femur, and the adductor tubercle down there. Now, I think before we go on further down here, we should put in the uh, inguinal ligament. It extends from the anterior superior adex spine to the pubic tubercle. And then you remember it turns round as the lacuna ligament and then goes along the superior ramus of the pubis as the pectineal ligament. So here is the inguinal ligament, which is the second lower edge of the uh, aponeurosis of the external oblique. Now the muscle that arises from the outer surface of the uh, obturator membrane is the obturator externus. You notice that there is a small deficiency up here called the obturator canal which if you were to pass your finger through would enter the pelvis and of course this is the point where the obturator nerve comes through and the obturator artery comes through. So we will leave a small gap there and put in the origin of the obturator externus from the outer surface of the obturator membrane and the surrounding bones. And it passes upwards and laterally underneath the hip joint and is inserted into the upper back part of the great trochanter up here. So we erase the structures that are covered by the obturator externus in this sort of manner, passing upwards and laterally behind the hip joint to go into the great trochanter. It's clearly a lateral rotator of the hip joint. Now we'll put in, up in the top here, the obturator artery, a branch of the internal iliac artery. It's come through that obturator canal and divides into one branch that goes around that way and the other branch that goes around the other way and it's lying underneath this obturator externus muscle supplying the deeper surface of it and sending a branch up to the head of the femur along the ligamentum teres. And then we bring through the very important obturator nerve. Now just as the obturator nerve is emerging through that obturator canal, it divides into two. An anterior division which is passing above the upper margin of the obturator externus and a posterior division 
which supplies the obturator externus and then emerges through the substance of the obturator externus. And we'll leave those two branches there, the anterior division above the obturator externus and the posterior division which pierces the obturator externus. Well now the next muscle that I would like to put in is this massive muscle occupying the greater part of the adductor region known as the adductor magnus. Now the adductor magnus is curious in that it has two parts. One part arises from the ischial tuberosity region here and passes down to the adductor tubercle and is known as the hamstring part of the adductor magnus. And another part which arises from this inferior ramus of the pubis and the ramus of the ischium and comes down in this direction and is known as the adductor part of the adductor magnus. So let us put in the hamstring part first, arising from the ischial tuberosity and passing downwards to be attached in this sort of way to the adductor tubercle. This part of the adductor magnus uh, is supplied by the sciatic nerve as are all the other hamstring muscles. Now the adductor part of the adductor magnus is coming from an area like this and the fibers come across and are inserted into the linear aspera on the posterior surface of the femur. And so we'll put the other fibers across like this. And as you'll see, as we sweep the fibers across, they're going to cover the hamstring part of the adductor magnus. So let us erase that deeper part of the adductor magnus for the moment and put in now the adductor fibers of the adductor magnus. Going behind the femur in to be inserted into the linear aspera on the posterior surface. Now we must leave in the lower part here an opening which is the hiatus in the adductor magnus and it is the opening through which the femoral vessels will pass from the front of the thigh to the behind the knee joint and enter the popliteal space. So here then are the adductor part. Here is the adductor part of the adductor magnus and it is this part of the adductor magnus that is supplied by the posterior division of the obturator nerve. So we'll bring down that posterior division of the obturator nerve and it comes on down and as it comes down it supplies the adductor part of the adductor magnus and finally goes through this hiatus in the adductor magnus to supply the knee joint from the posterior aspect. The next muscle that I want to put in is the pectineus. This is attached to the superior ramus of the pubis here and passes downwards and laterally and is inserted behind the femur very close to the lesser trochanter. And you can see from its position, it's covering over the obturator externus and bearing it from view. And from the direction of the fibers, you can see that it'll have an effect of being an adductor of the hip joint. So this is the pectineus. Since it's in front of the joint, it will also have a flexor action and its nerve supply is usually from the femoral nerve, although it may receive a twig from this anterior division of the obturator nerve. Now the next muscle we must put in is the adductor brevis. Now the adductor brevis arises from the lower part here of the body of the pubis and passes downwards and laterally in front of the posterior division of the obturator nerve and in front of the adductor magnus to be inserted into the linear aspera. So here it is, then it arises, the adductor brevis arising from the lower part of the body of the pubis, coming down, quite a small muscle, and is inserted into the linear aspera behind the shaft of the femur. So we erase the underlying adductor magnus, and the posterior division of the obturator nerve. And here is the adductor brevis. It is an adductor of the hip joint, and because it's passing posterior to the femur, it will also have a lateral rotator action. It will receive its nerve supply either from the anterior or from the posterior division of the obturator nerve. Here's the posterior division of the obturator nerve coming down like that, and the anterior division will come down anterior to the adductor brevis. Well now we're in a position to put in an important artery which is a branch of the femoral artery and is known as the profunda femoris. This passes backwards between the pectineus 
and the ductal longus. Now, the ductal longus we haven't yet put in, but we have the pectineus in position. So I'm going to show here the upper end of this artery, the profunda femoris, which is passing down, down on the anterior surface of a ductor brevis and coming down and will finally end as a perforating artery which pierces the adductor magnus and goes through into the posterior hamstring compartment. It is the main arterial supply to the adductor muscles, the profunda femoris artery. You remember that at its beginning, it gives off the medial and lateral femoral circumflex arteries, which I'll just indicate in that manner. So here's the cut upper end of the profunda artery with the medial femoral circumflex coming off one side and the lateral femoral circumflex coming off the other side. Well, let us now put in the adductor longus. Now, the adductor longus arises just below and medial to the pubic tubercle there and is coming down and going behind the uh, shaft of the femur to be inserted into this linear aspera. And you'll notice that as we carry it down and laterally, it covers the adductor brevis and the profunda artery, and it also covers the anterior division of the obturator nerve. It's a wider muscle, and it is a longer muscle than the adductor brevis. Here it is, adductor longus, rising from below and medial to the pubic tubercle, coming down, and its fibers are passing in this direction. It is supplied by the anterior division of the obturator nerve. Now, sitting on the anterior surface of adductor longus in this region is the femoral artery. It's a large artery which is passing down and disappearing through the hiatus in the adductor magnus. And it goes through there and there becomes the popliteal artery behind the knee joint. And of course, accompanying it, we have on the lateral side to begin with is the femoral vein, which is a continuation of the popliteal vein. And then it comes up and begins to lie, first of all, posteriorly, and then is going to lie on the medial side of the femoral artery. So this is then the adductor region, consisting of the adductor magnus, the adductor longus, and between the adductor longus and the adductor magnus, we had the adductor brevis, and higher up, we have the pectineus and the obturator externus. And you can see how the blood supply of this compartment is from this important profunda artery, and higher up from the obturator artery. You can see how the nerve supply is from the obturator nerve. And you can see how that obturator nerve has descended uh, is two divisions, the posterior division supplying the obturator externus, going down behind the ductor brevis, lying on the ductor magnus, supplying the adductor part of the ductor magnus, and then disappearing through that hiatus to eventually supply the back of the knee joint. You must bear in mind that this medial side of the leg or thigh, referred to as the adductor region, is enclosed in deep fascia and separated from the other parts of the thigh by fibrous septa. Now we'll build up a sagittal section through the thigh to get some idea of the relationship of these muscles to one another and to the obturator nerve and to the profunda artery. Now we'll make this the anterior aspect and this the posterior aspect. So I'll put a line down here indicating the anterior surface of the skin of the thigh. And I'll put a line in here indicating the skin of the buttock and the skin of the back of the thigh. I'll draw in here on section the superior ramus of the pubis and here on section the ramus of the ischium. And I'll put in position the obturator membrane leaving a deficiency for the emergence of the obturator artery and nerve. I'll put in position here the 
obturator internus muscle, which is attached to the inner surface of the obturator membrane. And on I'll put on the outside here, the obturator externus, which is attached to the outer surface of the obturator membrane. Now, in this region here, I'll indicate a section through the pectineus muscle, and below that, a section through the adductor longus muscle. Lying on a posterior plane to the pectineus and the adductor longus, I'll indicate the position of the adductor brevis muscle cut across in section. So, obturator internus, obturator externus, pectineus, ductor longus, adductor brevis. And then here we'll show the adductor magnus muscle forming the greater part or the bulk of the adductor muscle compartment and then just indicate in section here the quadratus femoris muscle. So adductor brevis, adductor magnus, quadratus femoris. Now if we bring down the femoral artery and just show it lying in the femoral triangle in that region here, we can show here the profunda artery coming off and passing down, disappearing in the interval between pectineus and adductor longus in the femoral triangle. And so it comes to rest on the anterior surface of the adductor brevis and finally ends as the last perforating branch. So here is the profunda artery a branch of the femoral artery. And you remember it gives off two perforating arteries which pierce the adductor brevis and the adductor magnus and anastomose with one another and also a third perforating artery which anastomoses with the terminal branch of the profunda artery, the fourth perforating artery. So we have one, two, three, four perforating arteries. And you can see that they go right through, perforate these muscles and supply the muscles in the back compartment here uh, on the posterior aspect of the adductor magnus. Now, coming off from the beginning of the profunda artery, we have the medial femoral circumflex artery. And this passes back between the pectineus and obturator externus. And one branch passes up to the gluteal region where it anastomoses with the inferior gluteal artery. And another branch will come down here and anastomose with the first perforating artery. If we now put in the obturator artery, it comes through the obturator canal, and one branch passes round that way, and the other branch passes round that way, so that we have anastomoses taking place between the obturator artery, the medial femoral circumflex artery, the inferior gluteal artery, and the branches of the profunda artery. The obturator nerve arises from the lumbar plexus from the anterior rami of the second, third, and fourth lumbar nerves, and it passes down from the medial border of the psoas, crosses the lateral wall of the pelvis, and joins the obturator artery, and goes into the gap here between the obturator membrane and the superior ramus of the pubis, this gap being referred to as the obturator canal. Now, while in this canal, it divides into an anterior division, which passes anterior to the obturator externus muscle, and passes down in the interval between the pectineus and adductor longus, pectineus rather than adductor brevis, and then between adductor longus and adductor brevis. And as it's running down, it may give a branch to the pectineus muscle, it invariably gives a branch to the uh, adductor brevis muscle and it supplies also uh, the adductor longus muscle. It usually ends by supplying a small area of skin on the medial side of the thigh. The other part of the obturator nerve forms the posterior division and this pierces the obturator externus muscle and supplies it as it's going through, and then emerges and passes down between the adductor brevis and adductor magnus. And it usually supplies a twig to the adductor brevis, and of course supplies the adductor part of the adductor magnus. You'll remember that the hamstring part of the adductor magnus 
is supplied by the sciatic nerve. The nerve then passes on down and passes through uh, the hiatus in the adductor magnus to eventually supply the knee joint. So here we have then the arrangement of the muscles, arteries, and the nerve in the adductor compartment. Notice the muscles once again. Pectineus, adductor longus, adductor brevis, quadratus femoris at the back, and of course adductor magnus. Here's the profunda artery, here's the medial circumflex femoral artery, here is the obturator artery. Here is the obturator nerve, a branch from the lumbar plexus. Anterior division, posterior division. Anterior division ending by supplying the skin, posterior division ending by supplying the knee joint. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.